Hey everyone, um, I'm going to go live in a minute, but uh, before I do, I'm going to share some videos which will give you context on what I'm about to talk about. So I got a direct message from someone asking um, how I found him to follow him. And I decided rather than making something up or trying to pretend I found him myself, I thought I would just be direct and authentic about it. As you might know from previous posts of mine, I hired someone to help manage and grow my Instagram. And he has a lot of different ways that he does this. And these methods are really unpopular on Instagram and they're really looked down on and frowned upon and they're thought of as like dishonest or whatever. And um, I'd rather talk about it and just come clean about it rather than trying to pretend or dodge or hope people don't notice. I'm like actually happy to talk about this and have a conversation about it. And again, those methods are um, following accounts, but then later unfollowing them, um, leaving auto comments on people's um, uh, posts. If you ever got a comment from me that was just like some emojis with like uh, clapping hands and uh, a thumbs up and an uh, exclamation point and a heart, something like that, that was probably not me that left that comment. It was probably my guy. So why on earth would I choose to tell you guys that I'm doing that? Like, why would I want to be honest about that? Everyone's going to be so mad at me, right? Well, I'm happy to take that chance. So here's the message I got. So here's my response to Nathan. And uh, please forgive a bunch of typos and autocorrect fails. I'm going to attempt to translate them in real time. Thanks, Nathan. I probably found you through one of your eco hashtags, but to be honest, it wasn't me who found you. I hired someone to manage my Instagram to help me grow my following and connect with more like-minded people out there. Uh, he's accom he hum accomplishes this by, yes, I know it's an unpopular method, but following and later unfollowing various accounts. Hey, you can only follow 7,500 accounts and then Instagram doesn't let you follow anyone else, so it's just not humanly possible to follow everyone I'd like to. And he comments on a lot of people's activity. That uh, that has grown my following by nearly 33%, about 3,000 new followers in just two months. It's been really incredible, and it has brought me an incredibly appreciative and compatible new audience I might never have reached before. Each day as I check my Instagram notifications, I can see who liked those auto comments or even replied to them, and that's when I get a chance to look at their profile, like more of their stuff, interact with them some more. It's almost like a matchmaking service where each day I get to check out and connect with more and more awesome people I might never have discovered before. I say all this because people keep adopting this popular negative attitude towards anyone who uses the follow-unfollow method to grow their audience. But why? What's the actual harm in that? Some people say, I feel used, or it feels dishonest. Okay, so that's just how they feel about what happened. Let's look at the pros instead of the cons. The pros are, there are 3,000 people out there who now know and follow me the vegan drag queen. People who never knew I existed before, despite the fact that I've been around for almost nine years. I'm just one guy. I don't have employees or an intern or a team. It would take forever, or getting on RuPaul's Drag Race, to grow my following that much. And I have too much to offer the world to wait that long. And another pro is that now there are all these new people who I'm interacting with, and I might never have found them. But now, here we are having this conversation. I say all that to make a bigger point. Everything in life is a matter of context. If someone looks at the follow-unfollow method, they will either create an empowering context for themselves about that, or they will create a disempowering context. A disempowering context sees no possibility. A disempowering context only sees, that's rude, that's cheating, that's inauthentic. An empowering context sees possibility. It will see, wow, 
So it's possible that a single individual can really build an empire without having to do it all themselves. You can actually ask for help and someone out there will help you grow your brand. How awesome to imagine that we're creating an actual economy of social media where someone out there can make a decent living just using Instagram and helping people grow their following. How creative and inspiring. It's all how you look at it. Thanks for indulging this long reply to your simple question, but A, I'd rather be upfront about it rather than trying to pretend it was me who found you organically, however glad I am to have found you at all, and B, it sort of inspired me for something I'd like to talk about today on my Instagram. P.S. If you want me to connect you with the guy who manages my Instagram and helped grow my audience, I'd be happy to connect you with him. You have some great content, and that's what's important. If you were just a new account with three posts, it wouldn't make sense, but this guy could be a huge help. So anyway, I'm going to go live uh, right now to have more of an expanded conversation about this. And feel free to interact with me uh, and jump in if you have um, thoughts on that. So here I am. You are now live. God, I love technology. I love technology and I love this cup of coffee that I'm reaching for. So I'm going to wait a minute because um, I know that it takes a second before people um, people get here. I'm not like necessarily expecting company like um, I'm not assuming people will drop by but uh, if they do that would be fun so we can have a conversation um, hi Michelle hi a nice friend um, Isabel hi Isabel and hi Apesaurus so guys if you um, have not uh, just watched my story um, I'm having this live chat um, sort of um, to continue the conversation that I started. Aww. And I feel strongly about you too, Abasaurus. Hi, Isabel. Make some more cooking videos. They were awesome. Um, anyway, so uh, for some context on what I'm about to talk about, um, I would recommend if you haven't already, go back and watch the story that I just posted. Um, and uh, okay, great. I'm getting a message from someone. Let me clear that. Message. Okay, great. So anyway, um, so if you haven't already watched my story, I would say uh, go take about um, five or six minutes and watch my Instagram story quickly and then jump back into the conversation. Otherwise, you're not going to fully understand what I'm talking about um, or where I'm coming from with what I'm talking about. So anyway, um, I am talking about the unpopular method of growing your Instagram following by uh, following and then unfollowing people and having people do auto comments on your account for you and having people like people's photos for you. Um, the reason I want to talk about it is uh, part of me, part of me always feels guilty no matter what I'm doing. If I walk into a store and I look at, and they don't have what I want, but then I walk out of the store empty handed, I feel guilty. I feel like, oh, I'm hurting someone's feelings because they think I don't like their store. And it's like my default context that I'm already always walking around with is that I'm in trouble and that like I'm hurting people's feelings no matter what. Like it could be the best day of my life and I will still be like, am I in trouble? Am I in trouble? Did I hurt that person's feelings? Did I make someone feel uncomfortable? Constantly. That is a conversation that is already, always happening in my head. So anyway, um, I say that because I want to talk about context. You heard me say my default context. What do I mean by that? Well, it's the context that is already there when I wake up in the morning. It's the context that I don't decide to have. It's the context I don't consciously create for myself. It is the context that when I wake up, it is already there. And all of my thinking happens inside of that context. So again, what do I mean by context? What am I talking about? Well, first of all, I should say um, all of the ideas that I'm talking about right now, these don't come from me. This isn't my own terminology or thinking. Um, if you haven't already done the Landmark Forum, uh, if you're lucky enough to live in a city or state or country, 
that has a landmark near you um, that is, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, and I wish what is taught in the Landmark Forum were taught in elementary school so that we all just grew up with these ideas because we would be using so much more of our brain than we currently do. So anyway, um, what do I mean by context? Well, here's what I mean by context. When you, um, by the way, just so I know who's here with me, if you watched the story that I just posted and you're here for the conversation, just comment below and say, I watched the story or I watched it. Cause I know it's like painful to type like a lot of words. Um, but anyway, there should be a way to like comment, like just from your laptop anyway. Um, so here's what I mean by context. So like, I'm sure you've heard people say, like, life is beautiful, life is wonderful, life is a journey. And I'm sure you heard some other people say, life sucks, or life is uh, unfair, or what you write, it's one life, it's one world, right? But all sorts of different people with different points of view all have a different way of seeing it. But you'll notice that the way everyone talks about it is they'll say, is, the world is beautiful, or the world is violent, or the world is unfair. When people say something is a certain way, it's a lie. It's a lie if they believe that's the way it is. It's not a lie if you realize that is the way I see it. That is my point of view, right? If I say life is beautiful, is that true? Or is that my point of view? I'm not saying life is beautiful like that's the truth. I'm not here to say what's the truth. I'm here to say life is beautiful. That's my point of view. Um, I'm not here to say whether life is beautiful or not, but you see, I'm giving an example. So when people see that I, um, I have a smile direct invisible aligner, so every now and then it's just like if you see me like going something going on with my mouth, that's what's going on. Um, so the reason I'm having this conversation is because um, I uh, choose to be very honest about the fact that I hired someone to manage my Instagram account. Oh, the guy who I I. Um, send that direct message to. He just um, replied to me. I, I can't see what it is right now, though. Maybe he'll join the conversation. Um, I'm sure, poor guy, just sent me a simple question and was not expecting a, like, five-minute long answer. Anyway, um, I would rather be really honest and open and upfront about it. And the reason is, like I said, my default context is, oh my god, I'm hurting people's feelings and I'm in trouble. For example, when I was a little kid, uh, my dad was getting me ready to drive me to kindergarten. And before um, we left, he said, did you brush your teeth? Now, I heard the question, understanding that I was supposed to answer yes. Like, the right answer was supposed to be yes. But I was like four or five, however old you are in kindergarten. I was like five years old. I was not brushing my teeth unprompted in the morning, like unless I was told to do it, I wouldn't just remember to do it. Now, fast forward 34 years and here I am at 39 and that's the same can kind of be true sometimes. But anyway, I said to my dad, I'm like, yeah, I told my dad, yeah, that I, I lied and I said that yes, I had brushed my teeth. My dad said, really? Like my dad lit up at the thought that his five-year-old kid woke up and brushed his teeth and was ready to go to school without having to be told to do it. And when I saw how happy my lie made my dad at five years old, I thought, oh my God, I'm so bad. I'm so wrong. I'm so dishonest. I misled my dad. Oh, thank you, Abe. Um, I misled my dad, like, oh, I feel so bad for him, I feel so sorry for him, like, oh my god, what a, what a, you know, like, I, I immediately had a disempowering context about what had just happened. Um, and here's the thing, when I say a disempowering context or an empowering context, think of it this way. 
because I don't want that to just become some terminology that isn't like accessible. Like if you can't hear that and immediately break it open and see what's usable in it, then it just becomes a concept, right? It's something that you can like stroke your chin and nod and be like, ah, yes, a disempowering context. But like, I need you to know what I mean and be able to use it when I say it in empowering or disempowering context. How conscious can a fiber? Well, it's not that I was that con I wasn't thinking about this at the time. It's just a memory I have where I lied and I wasn't honest and forthcoming about something, and I immediately felt bad for doing it. And I say that because when people write me and they say, like, oh my god, I'm so excited right now. Honey LeBronx just followed me on Instagram. I feel so terrible. Because someone out there who I don't know, randomly, this guy I hired, followed them on Instagram or commented on one of their posts on Instagram and that made their day to think that I found them and liked them and chose to follow them. And they're a fan of mine. And I mean, I think about that and that would be like, I mean, I know Colleen Patrick Goudreau right now, but she's one of my idols. That would be like when I first started listening to her podcast, if she found me in return and liked me and started following me, I would have, oh my God, it would have made my day. And it hurts me when I think, oh, thank you, Freddie. It hurts me when, when I see that that made someone's day. And I don't want to try to play it off like, oh yeah, well, you know, because the truth is those same people, I'm probably going to end up unfollowing, not because I'm choosing to unfollow them, but I have someone managing my social media right now. And, you know, first of all, you can only follow 7,500 people on Instagram. That's it. After 7,500, Instagram won't let you follow more people. I didn't know that. That's why I have like 7,000 people I'm following because you guys are all awesome. Why, I, there's so many like gorgeous thirst trap bodybuilders and so many awesome queer people and drag queens and vegans and activists and social justice warriors out there. If I could, I would follow. You know, I have almost 13,000 followers right now. I wish I could also follow 13,000 of you. Let the algorithms sort out who comes up to the top of my feed, right? But I would love to diversify as much as possible how many people I'm following. But it's just not possible. There's a limit. The day I can follow more than 7,500 people, I absolutely will, okay? But in the meantime, as I don't know how this guy does what he does, but it would seem that in order to free, to free me up on my account to grow my following more, he has to unfollow people that he once followed in uh, uh, people who I might be having conversations with and liking and responding to. He has to then unfollow them um, in order to be able to do the same with more people and find more people and more people. But when people then see, people don't know all of that, right? They just think, oh my God, honey, LeBron's followed me. And then they later find out that I unfollowed them. And what are they going to think? Well, if they have a disempowering, which by the way, our brains are not hardwired to automatically empower us, right? Our, our reptilian or, or uh, you know, caveman brain automatically wants to think, oh my God, I have been rejected. I have been thrown out of the pack. The pack doesn't want me anymore. I've shown weakness or I've shown fault and... I'm going to be left in the forest to fend for myself and I'm going to starve and I'm going to die alone and unloved, right? Like that's kind of, at least for this human being, that's kind of what's always going on in the background of my brain. But I don't see that going on. I just suddenly have a thought, right? I have a thought that, oh my God, I'm in trouble. Oh my God, I hurt someone's feelings, right? That's my default context. It's always there because we're not that far evolved from cavemen. It's only been, what, a few thousand, 
a few tens of thousands of years. If you look at the long history of evolution, that's not long enough to breed out that kind of thinking. And so in the world I live in right now, there's not actually any danger of a bear chasing me through the woods. There's not actually any danger of the pack throwing me out and me being left to fend for myself and forage for food and die, that's not going to happen in Hell's Kitchen on 44th and 10th in New York City. That's just not how it happens. But I still have that part of my brain that is looking for that because that part of my brain is hardwired to try to help me survive at all costs. Well, there's no bear in the woods chasing me. There's no pack that's going to throw me out and leave me to die. So the only thing that part of my brain has to look for and go to work on is, oh my God, did I hurt someone's feelings? Oh my God, am I in trouble? Oh my God, did I say something wrong? And that's why my conversation that's going on in the background of my brain is always going to come up with things to watch out for, to look for, to worry about. And that's what I mean by the default context. I'm not creating that. My brain is just creating that on autopilot. Now, if I don't know that, if I don't know that, and I let, not even I let that run the show, if I don't know that, that part of my brain is running the show, and I don't know it's running the show, I just think that is me seeing things the way they are, right? Like, following and unfollowing people on Instagram, that's dishonest. You are using people. You are, right, you are cheating to get ahead. You are just thinking about yourself, right? That is what that kind of part of the brain would see. That's what that kind of part of the brain would come up with. Because it's hardwired to, it's not hardwired to empower us. It's not hardwired to look for you know, possibility, right? Uh, the Agasha Insomnia says, and here I am yelling, yes, girl, while still having cosplay. I think I look weird, but yes, girl. Thank you. I'm sure you look weird as fuck. And you know what? Look weird as fuck. Anyway, let's continue. Um, because I have a phone call. Oop, I was supposed to make a phone call three minutes ago, so I'm going to hurry this up. By the way, I just want to say one more time. If you are agreeing with anything I'm saying right now, or if you are finding something for yourself in this conversation, please know that none of what I'm saying is coming from me or coming from I am so smart and so wise and so inspiring. I'm just one more schmuck who did the Landmark Forum. I'm not paid to talk about Landmark. I'm not part of Landmark. Like, I'm just someone who, I'm a big fan of the courses that they offer that help you, like, discover that this kind of stuff goes on in your brain. And if you want to take the course, you will learn how you can, like, see this happening. Kind of like you guys are discovering this in this conversation. This is all that ha All the Landmark Forum is, is a course where someone is basically talking about the kind of stuff I'm talking about, and over three and a half days, over a weekend, you discover this same kind of stuff that you guys are discovering in this context, or in this conversation. Um, Tommy and Lottie says, so true, humans are paranoid and you have to take control of thoughts and write your own story. Exactly. So here's what I'm talking about. When I say empowering content, Well, what else could I do? Well, you would have done the same thing in my situation. Well, like, you know, I didn't know what else to do. So that's why I hit him. Or, you know, there was nothing else I could do. That's why I did what I did, right? When we are disempowered, we don't see a wide array, a spectrum of, of possibility, a spectrum of actions we could take. But when you see that, 
and interrupt that and you consciously create for yourself an empowering context, right? Context, a new point of view for yourself. You create for yourself an empowering way of looking at what happened you will start to see actions you could take and you never saw those actions before. You will start to see options. You will start to see, wait a minute, I'm not forced to react. I don't have to react impulsively. I don't have to act outside my values. Like, you know what, I would never, tr I believe the golden rule, treat other people the way I want to be treated. Well, why didn't you treat that person with respect? <laughs> well, I, they had it coming. I, I had to. I, I did what I did because that is being reactive. I don't want to walk around in this world, in this lifetime, being a reaction to things and people around me. I want to, I intend to, be love and compassion and connection and understanding. I'm not automatically love and compassion and connection under, and understanding when my alarm goes off and I wake up in the morning. I'm not. That is not how I wake up. Maybe Beyonce woke up that way. I do not wake up like that. I create that, right? And as soon as I open Instagram in the morning and I see that someone said, um, like, oh, like, like, uh, you unfollowed me, blah, blah, blah. I don't see no sound. Wait, no sound. Really? Is it, is the sound not working? Is the sound working now? Can y'all hear me? Question mark. Can you guys hear me? If someone could let me know quickly. Just yes or no, I can hear you, or I can't hear you. Um, okay, good, you guys can hear me. So anyway, um, I, I have a tendency to over-explain things. I think I explained this well enough, right? So, yeah, I, I have this conversation because I want you guys to know, a lot of you who are watching me right now, you're only watching me because... Once upon a time, you saw that I followed you on Instagram. You saw that, oh my God, I gave a thumbs up and a little heart emoji on one of your com on one of your posts, or I liked some of your posts. And that's why, okay, so there's a delay. Let's just be with the delay. Um, so you saw that I followed you, I liked something that you posted or whatever, and I might unfollow you. I might. I'm not choosing to do that. I'm imagining that this guy who I hired to do this, he probably keeps a list of everyone he followed on my account, and then when he's done doing what he's doing, then he goes back and unfollows them so that he can go and do it again with other people. Um, if someone feels some sort of way about that, you are free to respond however you want to respond. But what I would hope for your sake, not mine, is that you can catch that. You can catch that you might be reacting to something impulsively rather than high mauna, rather than consciously creating for yourself how you choose to see what just happened. Um, I it only cut off for 30 seconds. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, I'm sure that 30 seconds was the worst part of what I'm saying, whatever. Um, so... Um, and look, I'm not here to, uh, you know, your, your feelings, your beliefs, your thoughts, your opinions, your reactions, those are yours. It's not my place to take them from you or try to fix them for you. That is part of your journey. Um, but I'm offering this as, yeah, like, th this isn't about following unfollowing. This isn't about what I'm doing and how you guys see what I'm doing. That's not why I'm sharing this today. This isn't damage control. This isn't me trying to put a good face on what I'm doing. Um, oh, hey, Bauda, I wish I was at the hospital with you because every time I'm at the hospital with Bauda, uh, I meet a, a beautiful new man somehow. Um, anyway, 
um, uh, I'm saying this and choosing to share this with you guys because I think there is a powerful lesson to be learned here. How someone responds to me following and unfollowing them is just one microscopic example of how people are seeing things in the world in an empowering way or a disempowering way. And I want you to take that example and see if you are reacting to me following and unfollowing someone, if you are reacting to that impulsively. Now, you're not going to think you're impulsively reacting to that. You might just think, oh, well, I know that's just the way I feel or that's just how I see it or that's right. Or no, don't tell me that that's not what, you know, you did hurt my feelings. You did um, take advantage of me. You did something dishonest. Remember, when you say something is a certain way, that's a lie. It's always a lie. Because who's to say what's true? That is your point of view. It's just a point of view. But there's no such thing as, in, in, as an invalid point of view. All points of view are valid because they're yours. And they're temporary. You <laughs> Raise your hand if your point of view has ever shifted on something, right? They're temporary. They're transient. They come and they go. Um, and uh, now, oh gosh, I, I lost my train of thought. Um, is it a train of thought? What if it's like several bicycles of thought? Anyway, um, so I say that to say that that is a point of view. Um, going to kitten vids, bye. Um, so um, anyway, I'm saying that because if you can catch your reactive mind, if you can catch yourself being a reaction to something, especially in, in something so contentious and unpopular and controversial as an Instagrammer using the follow unfollow method, if you can catch yourself being a reaction to that, now you can start looking for that in other areas of your life. Is there a person in your life who always rubs you the wrong way and no matter how hard you try, whenever you see them, they just give you a dirty look or they always talk down to you or they always think that they're better than you, right? Is there anyone who has someone in their life like that? I know I do. Well, here's the thing. Is any of that true? Is any of that that I just said about that imaginary person, is any of it true? Or is all of that a valid point of view? A temporary point of view? A transient point of view? A malleable point of view? A point of view that has you thinking they are this way, they are that way, well, that's up to you to change that and transform that. If you can realize you aren't having a relationship with that person, you are having a relationship with your point of view about that person. Well, if you think that this point of view here that's in your face, that's blocking you from really seeing that person as who they are, well, then you don't have a relationship with that person. You have a relationship with your point of view about that person. And you hate your point of view about that person because it's a disempowering point of view about that person. And you have no choice. Of course, you would have to dislike that point of view about that person because it's awful. Every time it's awful, right? Well, if you can see that that's a point of view, you can set that point of view aside. And you can consider, what if that person is not my, perspe my perspective of them? What if that person is not my point of view? What if my point of view only allows me to see that person show up a certain way? Because your point of view will always look for evidence to justify itself. Your point of view will come up with all sorts of evidence that, see, 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 there it is. There it is again. It's right. It's right. How many of you are right about 
the way your mother is. Right? How many, raise your hand, how many of you are right about the fact that your mom is judgmental? Your mom is racist. Your mom is overbearing. Listen, I have all sorts of disempowering thoughts and opinions and beliefs and points of view about my mom. And they mess with me, but they only mess with me when, for a moment, I forget that that's not how she is. That's how my point of view allows me to see her. And my point of view will always convince me that, see, I'm right. See, look what she just did. Look what she just said. I'm right. That's the way my mom is. It's just my point of view. And it's up to me to choose my point of view. Anyway, um, could you please write a book? Yes, so true. This is super helpful perspective for new vegans to readjust to the violent world of being surrounded by omnivores. We have to relate beyond our own feelings and cultivate compassion for all. Well, listen, you guys, I should write a book. No, I should not write a book because if I wrote a book about what I just talked to you guys about, I would basically be plagiarizing because these ideas aren't mine. Everything that I just said is literally what you learn and discover in like the first day of the Landmark Forum. Within like the first three hours of the Landmark Forum, that is what you learn and discover. If that's what you learn in the first three hours, can you imagine what you learn on the first day of the Landmark Forum? Because it's a 12 hour long day. I mean, it's a lot, it's long. Um, but, or maybe it's, no, it's a 13 hour, it is three 13 hour days back to back. Imagine being well rested, having made sure you brought snacks and water and whatnot, and you've got your coffee and you are now sitting down having this conversation. I mean, you've cleared your schedule to make sure that you have the capacity to be able to have it. But imagine that you went to a weekend long workshop where you had a 13 hour long conversation about this and beyond. And then you go back the next day and you have another conversation on top of what you already discussed. And then the third day, it is a three and a half day long conversation and it's it's available as an in-person course and it's called the Landmark Forum. So no, I don't need to write a book. Um, I. Because honestly, if I wrote a book, it would be of no value to you. Because the way the Landmark Forum works is it's not a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's not a thing that you sit alone in your room and you read and digest and now you know. It's an experience that happens in a conversation that happens in a large group setting. There's one person up in the front of the room leading the conversation the same way I'm leading this conversation between the twos and threes of people watching this. Um, and then there's about a hundred or 200 people in the course together who are all having this experience and all having this conversation. And it's not just about the person leading the conversation. You're going to watch people get it. You're going to watch people discover things in the moment. You're going to watch people have insights and breakthroughs that make it possible for them to progress in areas of their life where they have never progressed in their whole life. That one area of their life has been stuck and suddenly they discover something that allows that area to move forward. And it's so exciting. Um, I can only share this one little tiny sliver of what I discovered for myself out of doing it, but please don't think that I'm the source or I'm the author um, of, of any of these ideas. <sighs> it, like, if I could, everyone watching this would also have done a landmark forum because this is the kind of stuff that it makes available to you. And I'm not saying that all you get out of it is insights. What I get out of it is a point of view that lets all this wide array of options and takeable, takeable, is that a word? Options and takeable actions show up for me inside of that point of view that I get to put on for myself each day. So anyway, I am 
20 minutes past? How am I 20 minutes past due to have this conversation? I have to hop in a shower because I have someone coming over in 25 minutes to help me with my apartment. So I'm going to shower, have that phone call, and then I got to run. Anyway, thank you guys for taking time out of your day to have this conversation. If you have not already watched my Instagram story, go back and watch it because it'll give you context on what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, thanks so much. Um, If you don't already, please follow me. Um, Check out my website, vegandragqueen.com. I'll go ahead and list that below. Um, Thanks for watching. Check out my website, vegandragqueen.com, link in bio. There you go. All right. Thank you. You're amazing, too. Thank you, guys. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, if you like this video, please like, comment, and share. And you know, as long as you're here, you might as well look around a bit. Go to my website, sign up for my mailing list, check out my cooking show, my podcast, or learn how you can support my work on Patreon.